the gospel of the Lord. pre-pandemic, if we could remember those times. Um, I, I was talking about a show called One Strange Rock. It was on Netflix. It was like about eight, nine episodes or ten episodes. And um, I don't know, I just had this thought of like I wanted to see that again. So now it's off Netflix, so I had to rent it for like three bucks, but it was well worth it. Anyway, just to re remind you, this one thing that really struck me was how this sandstorm that starts up in Africa goes across the ocean, goes over to the Amazon, and it's like perfect fertilizer for tree life, plant life to grow. And then as that grows, water gets sucked up these trees all the way up into the sky by the tip of the branches, and then that vaporizes. And the largest river in the world is this vaporous river, and then it takes this vaporous uh, oxygen and moisture to other parts of the planet that are deficient in oxygen and moisture. And it was just like incredible that this is all occurring and there's a million examples of how this is occurring on the planet Earth. And then of course they also have some of these astronauts who have gone up to space, some of them, one was up there for over 600 days and they're taking pictures of the planet Earth and how it's this living, breathing, it's like Earth is alive, you know? <laughs> and I thought, you know, that's, I think that's a great like analogy or an image of, of the divine, of God, that somehow when you just get a sense, like when Einstein said, I want to know the mind of God, when you look at the planet Earth and how organized it is and how interconnected it is, everything, is interconnected with each other. That it's speaking to us, it's saying something to us about God, about the divine. And, and it's such an interesting thing when we think of like God, right? We all grew up where God was this guy, this old guy in the sky somewhere on a throne. And then you even have like these, you know, Jesus is gonna be the, on the, the, the father and the king of the throne. And James and John are like, hey, listen, I know you're going to get crucified, and I know you're going to, but can we sit on your right hand and your left hand? And like, you know, they, they wanted, they're already like situating themselves for uh, status of the kingdom. But like when you think about God, so there's that sense of God being what you call like this theistic God, this being that we pray to, this being that we're going to like walk up to in the judgment and kind of like, you know, here, here's my, uh, my list of things I did. Can I get into the kingdom? And then we're going to be judged. There's always that, you know, go to the left and go to the right. Even, even today's gospel, I'm reading it. I'm going, what the heck is it? Every time there's a gospel pen, I am the vine. You are the branches. Live in me. I live in you. Bearing fruit. Okay, good. But if you're not doing this and you're not doing this, you're going to wither and crumble and we're going to get rid of you. And we're going to burn those branches. <laughs> like, it just doesn't make any sense, right? It doesn't make any sense for this divine to be communicating this love and this intimacy and this connectedness. And then somehow what's consistent within that is but if you're not, you're in deep trouble. I, I, I really, to be honest with you, I don't even understand what's going on there as far as the, the, the writer, the author of that. To me, I mean, I like to look at it more in terms of you have divine connection, you have this intimacy, you have this strength and this sense of connection, and you can go through your life with this, this power, or you can kind of go your own way, not like you're going to be punished and tortured and set in some fire. It's really more of, you know, our lives are not as powerful and they're not going to run as smoothly if we're doing things on our own accord and living by our ego. So it's more of like a, a higher realm 
in a lower realm as opposed to, you know, you're in or you're out. So what are the images that we have? So we have this vine and then we have the branches. So let's talk about the vine and then let's get into those branches. So the vine, we hear images of I am who am, I am presence, I am like the essence of life itself, I am being itself, I am who am. And we're talking over 3,000 years ago, like how, how amazing to say that 3,000 years ago. God's name, God is I am who am, the, the very essence of being. I am, form of the verb to be, I am. And that this God was this Yahweh, this, this presence that led the Israelites in various things in their life as they moved and they evolved. And then we move into Jesus. And we're saying that Jesus incarnated God. Jesus embodied was the mind and the heart of God. And who is this Jesus? What are the images, right? Last week we were talking about Jesus, the good shepherd. He lays down his life. He knows those sheep, and those sheep know him. The Good Shepherd is such a powerful story, such a powerful image of intimacy, of this shepherd not only has our back, but is willing to risk his own life if the sheep goes off on its own. Such a powerful commitment that God, this divine essence, has for each one of us. You know, so how do you, how do you see God? Such a, such a powerful question that we have to ask ourselves. You know, I, I don't know. I've come to believe that more and more, if I go outside and I see the trees turning green and the birds chirping, and I just see life, little children playing, I look at that, and for me, I see God in all of that. I feel God's presence in life itself. I mean, here you're all looking at it with your mask on. <laughs> um, that right here, right now, in our humanity, as we're sitting here, we're all an expression of this divine. And I think it's, well, I'll just speak for myself. It's totally beyond me that God is this energy of life. God is the essence of being. God is consciousness. And we are all an expression of that consciousness, of that presence. And that this Yahweh, this divine, and this is important intimately knows us, intimately knows everything about you, and also has that sense of complete acceptance of who you are. You know, in the gospel passage, whatever our heart, whatever, anything that we've done that we kind of regret or we feel bad about, that Yahweh, God, the heart of God, is overpowering anything that has ever happened to us or that anything that we did. So this vine, what is the vine for you? What is the, what is the vine like? What is this? You know, when these astronauts are up there in space, can you imagine what that must be like to be there and you're looking at the planet Earth? I don't know, I think it's, is it 250 miles? Is that, does that sound too close? I think the space station. And they're looking at Earth and it's, it's, Turning and it's lit up with color and blue and, uh, and green. And it's just like this beautiful, colorful. You've seen the picture of the planet Earth. To me, it's like, wow. Like, just pause and think of the wonder and the awe of what this God is like. Would it be safe to say that it's beyond anything we could possibly even imagine? 
that, you know, it's almost kind of funny, you know, when you see like preachers get up there and let me tell you about God. I'll tell you about God. Like you have a market on God. Are you kidding me? No, we, 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 I hasn't seen fear. Hasn't heard. We, we, we don't totally understand it, but we're being communicated. It's being conveyed to us over time that this essence, this being, is so in love with you, has your back, is totally committed to you. And when you look at the grand scheme of your lives, can you look at your life? We've all had crummy things happen to us, right? We've had our heart broken. Excuse me. We've had runny noses. Um, we've had we've had things happen, and yet I don't know. Like I look at like my life, and I've had my heart broken a lot of times, and disappointments, and yet I do see the presence of God in my life, guiding me and nudging me. I absolutely believe that God has brought me and all of you here at Good Shepherd. I, I don't know how it's happening. It's like you know. Not quite sure why we didn't get there's another example. I was wanted to get that church so bad out there in Lakehurst. Big offices and the kitchen and blah blah blah. And then we didn't get it. And you know, my my ego and my sense of wanting to like, you know, have things happen is all disappointed. And yet I have to open up to, I don't understand what's going on but allow the thing to unfold and something's going to unfold for Good Shepherd. You know, do do you have it in your life? You look back at your life and there's been some difficulties, but can you see the hand of God nudging you and there in your life? I I think some of the, the, the dumbest things I've ever done in my life is because I did it on my own accord and I didn't really want to have prayer and really think about what's my heart really telling me what to do. So, so now at 62, I've, I've learned my lesson. <laughs> and from now on, man, I just want to like listen to my heart. I want to go to prayer and I want to really say, I don't know what to do in this situation. Guide me and lead me and move me in that direction. Because you're going to guide me and lead me in the path that is in my best interest, even though I might not know it at the time. So, so the vine. Ask yourself the question, what is the, what is the vine like? What are the qualities and the characteristics of this vine? And Jesus says it's the source, it's the source of, of everything. Okay, so now we have these branches. What's happening with these branches? Do the branches sometimes forget they're part of the vine? Do the branches sometimes think like, okay, I'm a branch over here, and I've forgotten that that branch over there, who looks very differently than I do, who thinks very differently than I do, it can't possibly be a part of the same vine, can it? (laughs) And yet it's like, no, I need to get that every branch on that vine is interconnected with me. We might think differently, we might have a different belief about certain things, but ultimately, we're all part of that. So what do these branches do? Well, it seems like Jesus addressed some of these things when Jesus said, don't judge anybody. Don't judge anybody. Don't throw stones at other people. Let he who is without sin cast the first stone. Let he who has a market on the truth give your opinion to everybody. But again, like our point of view or our opinion is just that. It isn't the point of view or the opinion. It is a opinion and a viewpoint not the only one. So, was Jesus addressing that? That these branches 
while they're connected to the to the vine, have a tendency to kind of be critical or judgmental over somebody who thinks and believes something differently than they do. Is that a characteristic of one of the branches? And then Jesus says, don't worry. Don't worry, the Father knows what you need. You're gonna get it. Ask and it shall be given. Knock and the door will open. So he was addressing that. He's saying, I think these branches are going to, a lot of times they're going to forget that they're connected to the vine and they're going to go off onto La La Land and get a little swirly, worrying and living in fear. Um, and they're going to have that, that, that characteristic. What's your experience of the branches? What's your experience of yourself as a branch? You know, when you look at like levels of consciousness, right? So I like to think of this, and this is another thing that I've kind of evolved to believe is that if I close my eyes, if you close your eyes and you get a sense that you are an awareness, you are an, an invisible, eternal awareness. It is this awareness that's speaking right now. It's this awareness, this, this awareness is called Drew. That awareness is called Kathleen and George and Terry and Donna. We're all this, this awareness. And what happens to us if we look at the film of our life, we look at like the things that have happened to us, and very often we take the things that have happened to us and we create a story about that and we create a narrative about that, and then we start to think that, that who I am are the things that have happened to me. And yet if you think about it for a moment, where are the things that have happened to you 10 years ago and 20 years ago, and five years ago and last week? Where is that? It's not happening, but what we can often do is we, we, we carry it around with us. Oh, what happened to me 10 years ago? I mean, I'll tell you, I'll just uh, I'll be with you. Do you have an hour and a half? I used to love that. My, they used to ask my father, uh, Richie, we wanted you to know uh, how you played today, but starting the 16th hole, we only have an hour and a half. <laughs> so, so we have this consciousness, and I think that we're here to grow and become more more conscious. So the levels of consciousness, the one level of consciousness is victim consciousness. Life happens to me, life happens at me, and there's a sense of like, here is life, and here's me. And life is happening at me and to me. And so like, I feel like I'm a, I'm a victim, and I can get angry and complain, and why is this happening, and that's not fair, and, and I can live in that. You know, we didn't get to church. That's not fair. That's not right. We wanted it. They beat us by two days. Come on. We had our hearts set on that place. We got a raw deal. They liked them more than us. You know, and then you have another consciousness, which is life happens by me. That I have to take it to life. I have to make sure this happens. I've got to be in control of that. I've got to be on top of that. And God forbid if I let my finger up one second, oh my God, everything's going to break loose. So i got to control and I've got to dominate and I've got to have things my way. That's a level of consciousness coming out of feeling I don't want to be a victim. Now a higher level of consciousness that we're trying to move through is... Life happens through me so that if we don't get to church, okay, that's happening. I've got to surrender to that. We've done everything that we possibly could do, but we can't get it. And we now have to just surrender and allow that to be and allow ourselves to trust that this unfolding, brilliant, intelligent, loving, intimate presence is quite aware of what's happening here at Good Shepherd and we need a little bit more room. And to live in that trust and to allow for that. And, and that's just an example, right? But we're talking about everything in your life. 
the highest level of consciousness is that you are life. You are an expression of life, and you're here to express that life on its highest level. What, what are we doing with the expression of the life that we are? Are we bearing fruit? The people in our lives, are we trying to build up the kingdom of heaven in their life? Such a powerful, powerful gospel passage and the readings today. Because another characteristic of those branches is love one another as I have loved you. I, 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 I can't love any more than that. That's a total 100% commitment of love. And he's saying, love one another as I have loved you. Wow. Wow. That is tall. And you notice that he says, this is my commandment. He's not saying, here's my suggestion. It really would be nice if you could love one another as I have loved you. I would really appreciate it if you would do it. No. He's saying, let me be crystal clear about something. This is my commandment. This is the hallmark of a disciple. You want to be a disciple worth your salt, then you're going to love every branch on that vine as I have loved you. So therefore, to the branches, hey, branches, have no enemies. If you've got an enemy, you need to take a look at that. You are to have no enemies. Like, wow. This is my commandment. This is how we're to live. And ultimately, why is that? Why does the divine, who totally communicates himself through this Jesus, Why is he saying to be humble, to serve? The last shall be first. It's not about us. It's not about you. It's about others and giving yourself. Why is he saying that? Why is the expression of the divine a call and a commandment to the expression of love. Why? Because love is the highest frequency of a human being. Isn't that interesting? Love opens up your heart. It opens up your mind. Love enables you to live with power. So the call of the vine to all of the branches is to give your life away as the divine gives its life away. Why? Because when we do that, we live on the highest level a human being could possibly live on. 